Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Jimmy Dore Show. I'm here with Ron Placone and Steph Zamorano, and our co-DNC chairs made their first appearance together on MSNBC. Now, they're not co-chairs. Uh, there's Tom <laughs> Perez, who's the chair, and then there's Keith Ellison, who's the deputy chair, which carries a lot of weight inside the DNC. Mm-hmm. Like, for instance, if Keith wants to do something that Tom doesn't, they're going to do what Tom wants. But if Tom wants to do something that Keith doesn't, they're going to do what Tom wants. <laughs> I don't know if you remember last year when Tulsi Gabbard pro, uh, proclaimed her support for Bernie Sanders. She was kicked right out of the DNC. Yes. Uh, she had to leave. Sounds and like unity to me, Jimmy. She had to leave. She had to leave. <laughs> and uh, they wrote her an, a mean email uh, uh-huh. when she left. Do you remember that? Remember what she said to her? Here's what they said to her when she, uh, first of all, she called for more debates. Do you remember when she called for more debates, Tulsi? And then what, what she said, hey, there should be more debates, and she complained about it, and that Debbie Wasserman Schultz then disinvited her <laughs> from the next debate. And then she just left the DNC. And this is what they said to her. Uh, Representative Gabbard, we were very disappointed to hear that you would resign your position with the DNC so you could endorse Bernie Sanders, a man who has never been a Democrat before. Hmm. Hmm. For you to endorse a man who has spent almost 40 years in public office with very few accomplishments doesn't fall in line with what we've previously thought of you. Hillary Clinton will be our party's nominee. And you... St- so they're just saying that they just said that right out. This is this right out. Hillary Clinton will be our party's nominee. And you standing on ceremony to support the sinking Bernie Sanders ship is disrespectful to Hillary Clinton. You have called both myself and Michael Keeves before about helping your campaign raise money. We no longer trust your judgment, so we will not be raising money for your campaign. That's Hillary's campaign response to Tulsi Gabbard's endorsement of Bernie. That was, there you go. So remember, that's how people, but now here's their first, here's their first get together. And they're on with Chris Hardball. And, uh, boy, if you watch that guy consistently for a year, you can see, you see right through him, see right through him. Talk about a ratings guy. Just anyway. So here's the, here's the first question. You ready? Congressman Ellison, was this election rigged? Donald Trump says it was rigged. Your thoughts. He couldn't, he couldn't laugh bigger, right? You know why? Cause it's ironic that they're asking the DNC chair about a rigged election that doesn't have to do with the DNC rigging an election. <laughs> and that's why he's laughing so big. It's like, oh, he's not asking about our rigged election. <laughs> I can't even smile that big. My mouth doesn't... <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't make my lips open up that much. Anyway, he can. And uh, he's doing it. So look at that. That's that smile. That that ah shit. Yeah, we <laughs> screwed over Bernie. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, we did a billionaire smear on uh, Keith Ellison for the DNC chair, but he's standing right next to me because he got his mind right. You know, uh, with a guy who's getting help from uh, the Russians, uh, for him to call anything rigged is quite ridiculous. <laughs> really, Keith? That's horrible. So we're just going full out McCarthyism. We're just doing it. That's just what the Democrats do now. That's gross. And they won't stop doing it. We talked about it on the show. It's gross. And it's dangerous. And to see the DNC doing McCarthyism bullcrap like that. I hope you appreciate I cleaned it up. I said crap instead of shit. <laughs> People say that. People say about our videos. They go, I can't share them because too much swearing. So are you going to share them with people who only go to G-rated movies? <laughs> do, do the people you're going to share these with own HBO? Did they ever watch The Sopranos or do they ever go to movies? Because every movie has swearing. In it. What, what are, where do these people go for their entertainment where there isn't profanity? Jimmy, I reserve my swearing when we're in nine wars. <laughs> we have to be in nine wars for a swearing to be okay. Anyway. Well, I was going to say, it reminds me of that Lewis Black bit where like, someone said that to him, and, and he goes, look at what's going on in the world. What language would you prefer me to use? <laughs> it's like one of my favorite bits about mm-hmm. his. That was uh, from the Bush administration. Wow. 
All right, so uh, he goes on to do some more McCarthyism. No, you know, this was a good election. It was a fair election. I was very proud to support Tom. He won this thing fair and square. And I'm glad to be part of the leadership team. And we're just asking all of our supporters to come together as we have so that we can uh, not just stand up. For you know, we have to come uh, to coalesce around ideas, around a vision, and they don't have one. There's no vision. I haven't heard the Democrats talk about a vision. Hey, our policy is a single payer health care and the wars. Reinvest that money back home and free college for everybody. You know, Trump just proposed fifty four billion dollar extra for the military. I don't know if you remember, but Bernie Sanders said we could have had free college for everybody for around sixty five billion. Some people say eighty, some people say sixty. Where are you gonna get the but is anybody saying where's he gonna get the money for that? So, I, I, again, I don't want to get too off topic, but where's your big ideas? That's what we need to call. I'm not coalescing around a corporatist. No one is. No one is. Do you see how the people coalesced around Hillary? She lost. Do you see how people coalesced around Hillary at her rallies? No one was there. So we don't coalesce. Coal I, I almost said coalesce. <laughs> <laughs> that's when that's when we get around a uh, uh, a Coca Cola. <laughs> we coalesce. I'm coalescing. We don't coalesce around people or the name Democrat. Uh, I coalesce around ideas and a vision. And I got it. And I don't. I don't have one. They don't have one. But Jimmy, look at how well we're getting along. Look how well we, they're getting along. And we along. came together. And and none of us are Donald Trump. Look at this. Look at this. That's a vision. And we all have one enemy. Russia. So that's nice to know. <laughs> so let's see if they have anything else to say. Trump, but to go much beyond that, to project a positive vision. What is that positive vision? They never say. They never say what that positive vision is. We got it. We can't just be against Trump. We have to show. They said that in every DNC debate, too. And then they would never say what their vision is. What are you for? What's your plan? What's your big idea that you want the country to coalesce around? What's your big idea? Think big. What's your big idea? There isn't one. Single payer health care, free college and the wars bring that money back home. They're going the other way. Trump's going the other way. And the Democrats are right with him. Democrats are all for defense spending. Don't get don't get me wrong. For our country, which includes standing up to Trump. Um, uh, Mr. Perez, uh, this is something out of West Wing to give the guy you beat in a close election the number two job in the DNC. So what job are you going to give him? I mean, what actual role? <laughs> not nothing. Nothing. He's certainly <laughs> not a voting member, if that's what you're asking. He's certainly not going to have. So what job are you going to look at Chris like he's a schoolgirl? Look, you guys are all getting together now. You're all together. Is the congressman going to play here? Well, I mean, Congressman Ellison wrote the book on grassroots advocacy. Look at the turnout that he was able to produce in his district. You look at the state level offices in Minnesota. The reason one of the main reasons they're all Democrats is because Keith Ellison turns out voters. That's what we have to do. So it's a good thing we didn't put him in charge of the DNC. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good that Barack Obama decided to sandbag him once it was clear he was going to win and decided to uh, uh, nominate a corporatist like you on December 15th. So he's so good at that. That's exactly what you needed. He's so good at it. We decided not to... We, uh, we all decided that in the Obama White House and the corporate Democrats, he's so good at turning out grassroots people, we decided to form a campaign against him, beat him, and then make him go do that thing we want. So we're going to use Keith Ellison, just like the Hillary Clinton used Bernie Sanders. Didn't work. Nobody wanted to hear Bernie Sanders gaslight them about how great the Democrats were or Hillary Clinton. Didn't work. Nobody would show up. I got the videotape. Bernie gave speeches. Hundred people would show up when he was gaslighting them about the greatness of the Democratic nominee. No one gives a fuck. Sorry, I swore. I hope you can still share this. Not safe for work. <laughs> so, uh, he turns out the votes in in Minnesota and. We lost this election in this past November in no small measure because we didn't turn out voters in 
uh, Michigan. We didn't turn out voters in Wisconsin. We didn't turn out voters in Pennsylvania. Thank you. I, I mean, let's at least say, all right, it's uh, about time you recognize a very, very flawed ground game. I thought it was Susan Sarandon. <laughs> <laughs> Are they switching? Is it different now? I thought it was still Susan Sarandon and and me. I thought I also had a big influence on this election. Well, I didn't. You, you did email Hillary and say don't go to Wisconsin. That was you. I remember that. Yeah, we didn't turn. Well, at least he's at least he's saying, hey, we didn't turn out the vote. When he says we, I think you mean Hillary Clinton. Wouldn't even goddamn go. Wouldn't even goddamn go. Begging her to go. Come on, please come to me. And. Uh, and, and frankly, over the last eight years, you look at what's happened in, uh, in state legislatures. We got to turn out voters. And yeah, you don't just turn out voters by hiring a deputy. You know how you turn out voters? And look what's happened at the state level. We got to turn out voters. And he acts like it's just a logistics problem. Like we got to get more cars. We need to buy, buy more vans so we can fit more people in them. And drive them to the pub. <laughs> that's not the problem. The, the, that's what he's making it sound like. We got to turn out voters. It's like this trick of turning out voters, a special skill. It's a you know, it's just hard work. No, it's about a vision. It's about a vision. Still don't hear it. It's about how do you turn out voters? How did Bernie turn out 50,000 people at a clip to come hear him speak? How did he do it? How? He had a message that people related to. That spoke to their problems. That's how you do it. And again, they're all doing it's all, it's all us. Uh, it's status. This is status quo. That's that. That's that. That's what it. That's what it sounds like to me. If it sounds different to you, let me know in the comments. But that sounds. That's the status quo. And Keith Ellerson is just like Bernie Sanders. He got his mind right. And. Hey, I get it. He's a Democrat. Oh, look, by the way, Donna Tonahan's blood. He's a Democrat. <laughs> I get he's a Democrat. Okay. You're on a losing team, Keith, and I, I appreciate you trying hard. Um, but he's doing that thing. I don't want to end up like Ralph Nader. And... Um, does he have anything else to say? Uh, between the two of us, it's the definition of synergy. Getting out there, getting yeah. back to basics, building strong parties. Building again, strong parties. Again, they're not what? saying a goddamn thing. Uh, We're getting uh, back to basics. Go ahead. Why, why do you need to build strong parties? I need one party that is strong, and that's the Democratic Party. And you gentlemen are in the way of that growth and progress. Steph, I don't get it. This is the most annoying bromance I have ever seen. <laughs> Just throwing that out there, too, as a side note. It is. That is, yes. Um, it's just going to be disappointing to listen. It's hard to watch this for me. And I, I hope that sooner or later they come around with a vision. You know, again, you, you woke up Newt Gingrich in 1996 after the election out of a sound sleep, and you, he knew what he wanted to do. He had the contract with America, the 10-point plan. They had, they knew what they were about. You wake up, a, uh, you ask this guy, what is your vision? Uh, we're not Trump, and we're working families and helping reinvigorate the middle class and working people and giving them solutions, but they never say what? I had a dream that was so transparent. <laughs> they it should be saying a... it every day. They, that's funny. <laughs> They should, every time they go on TV, they should say minimum wage, $15, single-payer health care. Every time they go on television, single-payer health care, free college, end the wars, reinvest that money, or $15 minimum wage. That's what, I, I'm still waiting for a vision from the Democrats. I would love to hear Tom Perez's vision. And uh, if they have one there, they seem, they seem shy about proclaiming it. Because that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to sh shout it over and over. Hey, the next live Jimmy Dore show is March 4th. That's a Saturday. Get your tickets right below. The next one after that is March 20th. The shows sell out really fast, so get your tickets right now. Link's right there.